All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to an episode of Salty Veins Fishing. Today we're going to touch base on a question I get asked quite regularly, and that is, when is the best time to go fishing? Well, it's pretty simple. The best time to go fishing is when you can. There's no better time spent than being on the ocean, that's for sure. However, I'm going to explain a few things about weather, winds, swell, tides, lunar, barometric pressure, and bite times, which can really improve your catch rate. So let's get into it. The first thing I always check is sea breeze. This is going to give me the long range forecast that I need to plan that trip. A majority of us only get to fish weekends. However, if you're lucky, like me, you can sneak out after work, midweek, and really take advantage of some of the great weather, tides, and bite times that occur. Now there are several great weather forecasting sites available such as Seabreeze, Willy Weather, Fish Ranger, Boy Weather, which those two require a paid subscription, uh, which I don't see the value in personally, but people do like those websites. And then the standard um, BOM website, which is the Bureau, Bureau of Meteorology. And there's a fishing info site called Tides for Fishing, which I also use. So I'll drop a link for all those below in the description if you want to check them out. So I use the Tides for Fishing, which is the Lunar and Bite Time info I mainly get from there, and then Sea Breeze for weather. And I've grown accustomed to their wind graphs, predictions, and ease of, ease of use when it comes to getting that forecast. So once I see their wind predictions, I follow that up by clicking on the wind graph, which also works on your mobile as well. You just click on this. This will open up the prognosis or the synopsis chart. And I use these charts to see why the weather is acting the way it is. So low pressure systems are what cause wind and wild weather. And the high pressure bands are what brings low winds and generally much nicer weather. Now this is all dependent on how close the isobars are to each other. And this will dictate the changes in pressure between each region. And the closer they are, the more pressure in that area is changing and generates more wind. So if we look here, we can see the low pressure lines all close together. So a low pressure is anything under the standard um, or global average global sea level pressure of 1,013 hectopascals. So the hectopascals is a unit of measurement for pressure. Um, and it's mainly used in the measurement of atmospheric pressures. So we can see here a bunch of numbers, so you know, 1014, 1016, all the way down to 992, which is quite a low pressure, which will bring strong winds. We have a little key chart up here, which shows what these lines are on the synopsis chart, or the prognosis chart, sorry. With these low pressure ridges sitting over the top of the southwest part of WA and pushing through, you can see why Friday, which is the weather here, we're having really strong winds, and rain and possible storm. So we've got a low pressure ridge, which is bringing in a lot of wind into the state. And then luckily, on the Saturday, we have a high pressure ridge that's followed through with great big bands in between the pressures, which has then pushed that low pressure ridge away, bringing us much more favorable boating weather. However, it's still gonna be a bit of rain around, but that's not too bad. We can get around that. It's wind that's the biggest issue. So with the wind, we're looking at sort of low winds under sort of 10 knots for the favorable sort of day, which is pretty good for boating. And uh, we don't complain about that at all. So we can see that what they're forecasting for wind is matching the prognosis chart as we get a high pressure ridge push in on Sunday as well and in through to Monday, a really high pressure ridge with a lot of big open bands. So there's little to no pressure above the south southern part of Australia, which equates to why Monday is even better for weather. And then if you look at the end of Monday, there's a low pressure ridge pushing back in from the south out of Antarctica. And that is then gonna bring in the stronger winds again for Tuesday through to Wednesday. All right, so, what does that mean? It means that the winds predicted are going to be pretty close to spot on based off these charts because it's what it's what meteorologists use. So I just like to double check 
see what's going on, see where the low pressure ridges are, and understand why the weather is acting the way it is. So we can assume that Saturday is going to be a good day for boating. So the winds are safe, they're not too strong, and they're from a southwesterly direction, which is pushing on shore, which means that it's not going to be the absolute calmest possible, but being under 10 knots, it's very, very fishable, even in my 4.2 meter tinny. So next thing I want to check is the swell. So I fish in relatively shallow waters and have to travel through passages and reef systems that when the swell is large can make these passages dangerous to traverse and can affect my fishing plans. So as we can see here, the swell is 1.7 meters, but rising throughout the day to about 2.2, which is covered under the word waves. Now, as I said, two and a half meters and above is starting to get dangerous for my boat to get through the reef systems and out to the, my fishing ground. So anything under that is more than safe and I can happily traverse through there. So we figured out that the winds are favorable and the swell is low enough that safe boating to the shallow reef systems I fish is going to be an acceptable plan on Saturday. All right, so next I'm going to check is the sunrise time. So if we scroll down the page on the left hand side, we've got the Perth Astronomy and that'll show us first light and sunrise time. Now it only changes by a few minutes each day. We can actually check the actual Perth sunrise sunset chart for every day as you can see it only moves by a minute and we have a sunrise at 7 13 a.m. on Saturday and a first light of 6 46 a.m. so that means that we want to be on the water and out to the spot just before this time just before first light so I want to be launching at 6 a.m. Traveling for 20 minutes, get to my grounds, drop the anchor in, and have a fur have a bait in the water before this light is starting to illuminate the area. Then, from that, we want to check out the moon phases. So we can see that on Saturday, we're looking at about just over a half moon. Now, preferable moon phases for fishing are three days leading up to the full moon, three days after the full moon and then three days leading up to the new moon and the three days after. This sort of six to seven day period on either side of the new and full moon seem to produce the most amount of fish as the tide coefficient is at its peak, which means that there's the most amount of water is moving between the high and low tides. However, fish still have to feed, whether it's around this time of the moon phase or it's this time of the moon phase. So the moon phase itself while it does affect how much they're feeding and, and how aggressive they are feeding, fish will still have to feed. So they'll feed four times throughout the day. And this is when I come over to the tide times for fishing, or tides for fishing. And on the left hand side, the rising and setting of the moon. So we can see here, so this is for Thursday, so we'll go to Saturday. We'll go back down to the rising and setting of the moon. So the lunar transit is at the time at which the moon crosses the local meridian. So I've got it set for the warm sound area. And that, so at 12.48 p.m. is when it starts to set. But at 6.13 a.m. on Saturday, it's directly above. So fish feed at these four times of the moon um, transit. And that's moon rise, moon directly above, moon set, and moon directly below. So the moon rise, well the moon and the sun affect all living animals on the planet in terms of feeding and all that sort of stuff. So these are the four main bite times that fish seem to react to. Now, if we go back to sea breeze, Perth weather, we wanna check the actual tide times. Now, if we click on the forecast, rather than having to try and read the tides here, it drops down with the tide times table. And we got Saturday. So the high tide is actually midday oh, at 12.14 p.m. So right at lunchtime. So it's not, uh, it's not favorable 
in the sense that the sun's been up for nearly six hours or five hours and the fish have probably already done a majority of their feeding prior to that high tide. So what we can see though is the water movement between the high and the low tide from Friday night's low tide to Saturday's high tide and Saturday night's low tide is there's only about 35 centimetres or so of water movement. So that's how they base their bite times is on the coefficient of that water movement. So in terms of tides, I like to fish the couple of hours leading up to and just after the change of a tide, whether that is high or low tide. The change of the tide is the main factor. However, I do prefer a high tide, especially when fishing in shallow waters, as this allows for the most amount of water possible over the shallow systems, allowing enough coverage for the large fish to sneak up on unsuspecting bait fish and crabs, etc. So then if we actually take a look at Sunday's high tide, it moves forward two hours to 10 a.m., which is much more preferable as it's closer to two very important things, and that's the sunrise and where the moon is set in terms of transitioning. So if we go to Sunday, the lunar table. So the lunar transit, the moon is directly above us at 6.54 a.m. So we're only three hours apart between a high tide, sunrise, and moon above. So looking at the winds, the swell, the tide times, and the lunar transit, Sunday's actually going to be the more preferable day to fish than Saturday. So based on that, I would be fishing Sunday morning. However, if we look at Monday, this is what I like to call the Bermuda Triangle of fishing. Monday has the three especially important fishing factors all lining up almost perfectly. So high tide is at 7.15 a.m. on Monday. We know from checking the sunrise, the sunrise on Monday is 7.15 a.m. And if we check for Monday, and we check the rising, at 7.35 a.m. the moon is directly above Warmer Sound. So we have the three absolute key factors when it comes to fish feeding all lining up within 20 minutes of each other. And that, to me, means the absolute perfect bite time. So, with those lining up, Monday would be the perfect day to go fishing, but unfortunately, a lot of us work. So we're gonna to have to make do with a Sunday session and just hope that between the sunrise and that high tide and the moon above, we should still be able to get into some good fish. Now, let's wrap it up. When is the best time to go fishing? Well, the most important answer to that question is whenever you can. You're not gonna catch fish sitting on the couch or shopping with the wife. However, if you really wanna improve your chance of catching and not just fishing, use the information at hand on the World Wide Web Put together some key information to plan your fishing to plan your next fishing trip, and you'll be surprised at how well lining these things up ensure your fishing at a peak time. Well, I hope this helped explain how I use weather, tide, moon phases, etc., to ensure I'm fishing in the peak times to help me catch the fish that I go out and chase, and it will help you to understand why sometimes you can sit out there on some really nice weather weather days and catch absolutely nothing because you haven't lined up a tide change, you haven't lined up a moon transit time, and preferably with a sunrise or sunset. So if you can factor all these into the times you're gonna go fishing and line them up well, you're gonna increase your chances of catching a big fish or a fish in general by a lot. So if you have any more questions, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll answer them the best I can. Until next time, see you on the water. Cheers for tuning in.